Hello. <laughs> and welcome to my baby stream. It is I, Ellie, aka Keeb Noob, aka Keeb Boob. Oh, thank you, Turtle Cat, for subscribing. Thank you. Also, Double Day. You're crazy. Thank you for the three tier one subs, the gift subs. <laughs> we got Kinnick in the chat. We got Turtle Cat Conan. What's up? What's up? Static Age. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Oh, thank you for following. By Furry at the Heart. Thank you. Thank you for coming to my stream. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what's up, everybody? Hi, Trade Splatter. Um, so usually I stream on Monday nights, but we're. You know who's not in the game anymore? Mix on deck. So we're <laughs> we're taking over their time slot this week. <laughs> you and all keep me company as I burn the midnight oil. Aw, well, thanks for hanging out, Double Day. We appreciate you being here for sure. Um, but yeah, so we're taking over. We are keep noobs on deck now, and um, yeah. We are continuing the legacy. <laughs> but how's everybody's week going? I got some keyboard mail that I wanted to share. I've been feeling really tired lately, and I don't know if it's like the weather changing or what, but it kind of like wrecked my whole schedule for the weekend. And that was another reason why we're streaming tonight, because I needed to loop switches yesterday. <laughs> Finally done with the big old project for company. Oh, nice. Oh, it's associated with and chill. Interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah, my... I feel like at work I've finally gotten into the... Into a groove, like I know what's going on now. But behold the desk. I've been still using the Tomo pretty much every day. But um, <clears throat> we got the pixel mat. Also, how fun was last week's stream? I had so much fun. Like, I don't know if you guys had fun or not, but I was hella entertained. <laughs> so last week we built the gridiron. I'm going to send this back tomorrow to Jake, but... Um, I was, cause something I wanted to adjust was this switch seems slightly rotated. So I wanted to fix that before I send it back. But yeah, like I meant to do it last week, but I just was like so lethargic. It was intense. So, but look, look how cute these switches. But yeah, the seracoding on this thing came out so cool. I had a ton of fun. I think people will like the quiz too. It did take me a long time to do, but I think it was worth it. I thought it was fun to kind of like test everybody's knowledge. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to be building, it's called the Lulu. Let me pull up a picture of it. Um, my friend Frozen Forever sent me this board. It recently delivered from Board Source. Oh dang, it's huge. Okay. Make this a little smaller. So this is the Lulu. Um, it's a split ortholinear board that has columnar stagger, which means that each column on the the keyboard is um, shifted to account for like the the um like semi-circular nature of our hands because you know our hands are not like our fingers are not all the same length it kind of curves out towards the center so the columnar stagger is supposed to account for that um that shape by staggering the center columns further out to adjust for your fingies <laughs> yeah it is like a fancy lily 58 and um it's interesting because it's the top half of the case is aluminum and the bottom half is polycarbonate. It came in a couple different colors and it had like a fancy like 
different type of rotary encoder. Um, the board does come pre-assembled except for the OLEDs and the encoder. So that's what we'll be installing today, um, soldering on, and then we'll be, um, the PCB is hot swap. So, but it, um, my friend also opted for the, they, they had a tenting option. So you can, it's basically to account for like our, how our wrists are from like our elbows to the wrist are not perfectly flat. <clears throat> so it's supposed to help with like ergonomics. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty cool board. So we'll be taking a look at the PCBs. Um, and maybe taking a look at their, they created a custom firmware option or like a, it's kind of like a VIA alternative. It's called PEG, which I was like laughing. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I can't do a call stagger, but it's pretty double. -y. Yeah, I haven't had a ton of time to type on a columnar stagger staggerboard before, but I think they look really cool and I can see like why people would like them. Um, my main issue with like, uh, ortho boards is like, my fingies are lazy for the, um, the modif modifier keys since they're usually one U. I think that it was closer to like the boardwalk where it has a 1.5. I'd like it better, but also kidding for a boardwalk ergo layout is kind of tricky. So, <laughs> so I see why not as many people use, uh, well, at least like design keycaps around that layout. So yeah, um, but there was a couple things I got in the mail I wanted to show y'all. Well, with number one, I got this really creepy McDonald's toy. <laughs> so I don't know if you saw, but McDonald's had this like adult Happy Meal. It was like a collaboration with this company. What was it called? Cactus something. Yeah, it's called Cactus Plant Flea Market is the name of the brand. And they did, um, they did like a series of toys. I can show you the toys. People are reselling these expensive already. Also, hello to Bird. So this is the toys. So I got the creepy, um, the creepy doll. <laughs> I went a second day to try and get another one because when I went, I, I got three of the same doll. So if anybody wants one of these, I already sent out one, but I have two now. So if anybody needs the creepy doll for your collection, just let me know <laughs> and I'll send it to you. Was the prize a mortgage bill? Oh, that would be so sad. They're like, you get a student loan <laughs> and you get a student loan. <laughs> Girl, you cannot be saying stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna put them face down from now on. Watch them wake up in their back face up. <laughs> they look like the Don. They look yeah, they do kind of look like Scrump, but with like four eyes instead of two. Come here, Bean. Come here, Bean. Winnie is here. I'm trying to get her to be our friend. Come here, Bean. Come say hi to your friend. Come up. This girl. Oh, come say hi to your friends. Bert is here. Say hi to your friends. So yeah, that doll's really creepy. But it's kind of cute at the same time. They should just bring back Chicky Nuggy toys. That's what I'm saying. If they did a revamp of the Chicky Nuggy toys, people would go a wild. Like, or at least I would. I think I told you I got a chicken nuggy. Um, they have pop. What are those Funko Pops for those now? And I got one of them. Say hi to your friends. Bean. She's been pretty good, but she's been. She knows she's a celebrity now because I got, I I got in on the um, Rocklina's artisan commissions. So we're gonna be getting a Winnie, artisan soon. So it's kind of gone to her head. A little bit because she knows she's famous now so <laughs> the transformer food items yes those are great toys too like the hamburger one amazing say hi everybody 
You can lay down if you want to. Sit down. You want to see the artisan? Well, I wanted to show you guys this artisan I got. Um, it's a new artisan maker who they're, they had their first sale, but actually the sale was you only had to pay shipping. So this is their, uh, their card. Um, the keycap is named, excuse you, rude. The keycap is named Bait. The colorway is Fluorite. And the maker is called BKM. Um, oh, look. It's a collaboration between Slime Scholar, Obscura, and BKM. Hey, Thaktums, what's up? Thank you for the sub. <laughs> Welcome to the baby stream. I hope you're doing good. Bean. And then they also included some stickers. Oh, these are nice. I love stickers. You like stickers? You want a sticker? Hmm? She's like, I'm gonna eat your sticker. And then this is the artisan. It's kind of a cool sculpt. It looks kind of like a froggy. Excuse me, ma'am. It's like a froggy with like a Frankenstein kind of face. The colors came out really nice though. It's kind of like a mint green. I don't know if you can see the detail on like... You can kind of see it on the eyeballs. But there's a lot of like... Resin writing going on there. But yeah, this is a new sculpt. I thought it was kind of cool. So I entered. And we won. Also... There's an artisan that I want to hook me up with, but I need to talk to the post office because they tried to deliver it and then they said nobody was here, but I was definitely here. <laughs> so I got to figure out if I got to go pick it up or not. All right, Bean. Uh, some other things I got in the mail. Uh, GMK Polybius has arrived. So we got a dust mat. I got the beeps and boops, I think was the name of this dust mat. Yeah. And then we got the base kit. My favorite is business was closed, mail person, my front door was open. <laughs> my favorite all time, like, of the USPS. One time, they marked my package as, like, not being able to be delivered because of an animal. And I was like, what animal? Like, <laughs> there was, there was my cat sitting on the porch, like, asleep. But they never even came to my house that day. So, like, <laughs> I knew they were just lying, but I was just, like, laughing because I was like, what the heck? Alright, but yeah, I picked up the Polybius. A uh, space bar kit. It does have two dual three U, which is nice. Luckily, the kitting with Polybius was relatively easy because there was just the base kit and then the space bars kit, which I appreciate that because sometimes the kitting keeps me from buying stuff because I get overwhelmed by choice. But here's the box. It has the cute, like, novelty designs on the one side. It's on the side. Oh, it has the little space cables. The new boxes for GMK are, is, is really good. I really like it. Yeah, it came out really good. I, I took a look at it briefly the, um, when it arrived, but like the trays that they use now are so much better. Like it's wild. So it has like a top layer now, and then this the sets. Yeah, yeah. I will say I think all of the colors came out pretty spot on. The red is a little bit uh, more saturated. I think than the renders, but 
It's fine. Who cares? But all the icons look good. Here's the bottom tray. So we're going to use this later for um, the Lulu. The nice thing about this is because the mod keys are icons or like novelties. As long as you have the right row profile, you can use pretty much any key, which is good for um, with like ortho and stuff because you just need a bunch of one use. I love it on my PC Baka 60 because the case lights up like a neon sign. Ooh, I should try with that on mine. I'm, I'm curious, Static, what um, PCB are you using for the, uh, the Baka 60? Because I felt like the last PCB I used, the LEDs weren't super, super bright. But maybe I just need to adjust the QMK settings. <laughs> well, I mean, like, is it a specific one? Because, you know, like, you can use the any kind, like, universal 60%. <laughs> Alright. So, the Lulu. We got. This is the rotary encoder kit. Kind of with LEDs. <laughs> ANSI's been good. Okay. I'm gonna have to double check what I have in mind. Uh, my friend sent me... There's two OLEDs. I think it comes with this TRS cable, which is kind of interesting. So this kit was designed by Board Source. Um, I've purchased a macro pad from them before, I think. And then it came with this cable as well. I don't know if my friend bought this or if this came with it. Um, and then this is a sticker, which, come on, that's cute. My one hot take for cake for the night, anyone get shipping note on the Baka 70? Ooh, I don't have, I already have my Baka 70, <laughs> but I do know, I'm, gonna, I'm going back to Dallas. Uh, let me see. I'm going back in like next week so like the end of next week yeah no she's she's like sent out i think so the only like group eyes that are left is baka 70 which there's not that many boards um carpenteria is in currently in the process of shipping and then i think the final paperwork orders were the last things the only other group I know of that I don't think there's anything else except for the thick dock switches, but a lot of that the thick dock delays are because of the manufacturer. Like thick dock themselves has kind of ghosted. So and it's not just 3D keeps affected. <laughs> You're one of the last ones. No! Well, Mechfix and chill if you don't get your th your notification by next Saturday, just text message me. <laughs> Cause I'll be there. I have a Nope 60 in your Baka 60. Oh, okay. But I do have a second bow. I'm gonna have to check. I know I have a, I think it's the SNOP 60. Yeah, so Dallas is having a, there's a Dallas meetup happening on the 23rd. So I was like, oh, I should just go. And then I can help Davis like close up stuff and hang out so this also had an i think this was optional the tenting kit for the lulu the lulu i think the name for this board is really entertaining <laughs> oh also um uh mechfix and chill i sent out stickers to you today so you should be getting those in the mail yeah, I'm gonna go. I invited myself to the. <laughs> I invite myself to all the meetups. <laughs> Cause my my thing is like, I'm just sitting at my house, right? Like, and I work remotely, so, like, why should I be sitting in my house when I could be working anywhere? <laughs> all right. So here is the PC me, the hot swap 
PCB. So they solder all the components on except for the OLEDs, I believe. We can double check. I'm gonna laugh if the OLEDs are already done. But yeah, um, Punkshu, are you in the Dallas area? Because if so, let's hang out. <laughs> um, and then here is the board. So 58 key split keyboard. I want to, hello, how's it going? I'm near Little Rock. Oh, okay. Yeah, hit me up. I'm getting there on the 22nd. Uh, yeah, I'll get there on the 22nd. I'll be there for the meetup on the 23rd, and then I think I'm leaving on the 26th, but I might stay longer depending on, uh, like, if Davis needs more help or if I'm vibing, then. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look, because I haven't opened any of this. I'm also going to switch keyboards, I think. Just to give myself a little more um, desk space. I split on getting this. Did it? <laughs> Most likely. Hey, what's up, Nikki? Hey, yeah. That was good to meet you at the at the Houston meetup. So yeah, definitely. Holla at me if you're going to Dallas, because I'll be there. I invited myself again to the Texas meetups. I do it all the time. <laughs> Alright. And I found out there's the flight to Dallas is cheaper than Houston. Because they fly out of my local airport. And it's Southwest. So it's super cheap. Alright. Build guide. So here's the inside of the box. It says prior to building any keyboard, it's imperative to look at the build guide. Always support hot swap sockets from the back. Yep. Do not over tighten screws. And there's some kind of weird diagram. Huh. Okay. This is kind of cool. The box that they put it in is pretty nice. So there's two. These are the two top halves. Aluminum. Aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> these are nice. I feel like there's not like, I mean, there are machined aluminum like split boards but I feel like they're not as common oh and it comes with plate foam so this sits under here I'm kind of tempted to build it without the foam and then see how it sounds and then since it, the PCB is hot swap we can always add it in later um, there's a couple of packets of screws there's some like real small ones and then some bigger ones. It also comes with a very tiny Allen wrench. Let me make sure we don't lose those. Look, that's the um, limited edition Cerakoted screw from our last week. <laughs> is this the thing or is this me just messing with them? A little lemon. Oh, there is something in here. Oh. Who is she? Oh, okay. So I think these are the covers for the OLEDs. Yeah, I think that's what both of these are. Okay. It looks like it comes with two sets. One is frosted, and the other is clear. I should ask my friend which one she wants, but... I'm assuming that's easy to take out. 
<laughs> and then the bottom piece. Ooh. Oh, so I think these are for also for the um the covers. If you look here on the paper, it looks like this piece attaches to that. And then these are the bottom pieces. These are nice. It has the, um, it has like a little, it almost feels like silicone or something. It's some kind of plastic, like, like this whole thing is bump on material. So that's nice. Okay, well I'll start pulling everything out of the box. Or, actually let's look at the PCB first. Because I want I don't wanna like clog up my work area. Okay. And let me message my friend too about the uh Hey what's up Matt? How's it going? Yeah, the Lulu's pretty fun. I'm at, I I I wasn't gonna get one myself, but I was excited. Uh, to be able to build one because I thought it was super interesting. I just messaged my friend. Oh, uh, is my shout out command not working? Oh, you spelled it wrong. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let me um double check the PCB. Cause yeah, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure what's actually been plotted already. <gasps> Look how cute! <laughs> they put a little it's like a mini version of the Lulu layout. <laughs> It's like baby. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I'm in bed. I'll blame it up. Hey, yeah. Okay, so this is the PCB. Oh, sick. Oh, sick. That's cool. Okay. Okay, so we have to do less um, soldering than expected. So yeah, so uh, this is called, I believe, panelization. So on a PCB, um, I believe it's meant to like reduce co costs. And these little like holes here are basically like perforations on the PCB. They're called mouse bites. Um, and you can just break off these pieces. Um, but I think they're cool, especially for like boards that are like not uh, just like rectangular. I think they help with like, to me, it feels more secure when shipping and I, and I bet packaging is probably a little easier to manage when it's all just one unified piece. Yeah, I just noticed that. Um, so the, the OLEDs are actually, there is a socket here um, already in place. So I, these, uh, I know Milmax, offers some like this. I don't know what brand these are particularly. Um, so the rotary encoders, I believe, yeah, and they already have um, pins soldered to them. So all we have to do is just drop this in for the OLEDs. Um, and then the rotary encoders will need to install, but that shouldn't be too hard. Hey, what's up, Fruits on Forever? The other thing I didn't know about this board is that it uses the RP2040 microcontroller. Um, some ways you can tell is there's a little Raspberry logo on the controller. Another giveaway is these here, these larger things. So, uh, the RP2040 requires that you have external flash memory for, to use them for keyboard stuff and just generally. Um, so if you're ever curious about that. 
it looks like two. It's hard to tell because of the lighting, but it's so interesting. I have a feeling these little guys here are probably like voltage regulators or something. But yeah, but so these two are the TRS connectors that will connect the two halves of the board together. And then whichever one you want, you should be able to just plug in t direct to the computer. We got reset buttons here. Let's take a look at that back. So we got the, um, oh, there's in switch LEDs, hot swap sockets. And then, oh, interesting. Hmm. I'm actually surprised about this. Okay, so. Yeah, so my friend got the tenting kit, so we'll use that as well. Um, but something interesting is that the bottom half of the case is translucent. Oh, there they are. Okay, I was like, where the heck are the underglow LEDs? So the ones that are here are the in-switch ones. They're facing this direction to shine up through the switches. But these ones here... These ones are the underglow LEDs, so it'll be nice and beautiful when we plug it in. This is cool! I love looking at PCBs. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna snap this off. You should be able to do it with your hand, but if not, you can use a plier. Just be careful, because it does use fiberglass, which is not a good thing to be... Um, breathing in. Let me get my tweezer actually. My um, fire. I had trouble getting my rotary encoder thingies into the top case so I gave up and just put a switch <laughs> in. <laughs> oh my gosh. Trades. Lies. I am just the student. You are the master. Or the teacher. Uh, actually, it's in my toolbox. Okay. I'm lucky. Yeah, you should be able to just snap those off. As long as you're not like inhaling it. Or like licking your fingers afterwards. But it's definitely a lot easier if you use pliers just cause like the leverage. There we go. You just kind of want to be gentle because you don't want to like bend your PCB too much. There we go. Alright, let me throw these in here. Oh, we forgot the top foam. I think that's a cute little touch, the packaging. <laughs> Alright, so this is the tenting kit. I haven't opened this yet. That's not a- that's- that's not a cutter, that's a sharpie. <laughs> Where's my- Oh, here it is. <laughs> See, this is my X-Acto blade, and this is my Sharpie, so I saw blue cylindrical objects. <laughs> and I was like, oh! <laughs> Alright. Aw, oh, this one has the cute little foam, too. Oh, and let me check my messages.
Alright, so there's three levels of tinting with this. Um, let me look up the degrees. It's 10 degree, 15, and 20 degree. Okay, middle one. <laughs> okay. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's like, there's three different levels. And I figure, too, like, if you're not used to tenting either, you might want to start off small and move up. Or... Or you can start middle and then kind of see if it's too high or too low. Because, yeah, the 20 is going to be pretty extreme. <laughs> The lowest tenting angle was too extreme for me. Oh, really? I remember... I don't think I ever had, like, an official, like, tented split keyboard. But I definitely remember, like, putting something in between my two halves of the board and just, like, resting them on it. <laughs> so I never had, like, an official angle. <laughs> Alright. So it comes with the hardware as well. So we'll put that on our thing. So do not apply too much pressure to the tenting legs. They're only designed to take pressure of normal typing and do not over tighten the screws. Okay. This is so cool. Okay, let me... Were those your messages going off? Oh yeah, you probably heard my Facebook messenger. My, I don't know how to separate my, like, my audio on different things, like apps and stuff. Because, <laughs> yeah, I know, too, like, it scares people when I plug in my, my keyboard because it sounds like the disconnect sound on your own computer. And it, like, triggers everybody. <laughs> oh, you know, let me move this, too, just to keep it safe. Winnie, protect the keyboard. Alright. Let me pull up to their documentation. I don't want to accidentally do something wrong. Lulu, build guide. Okay, so they said to install the OLED cover and put it into the case first. Okay, let's put this over here then. Oh, I need the cover. <laughs> Special. And she asked for the clear covers. One. Two. We're gonna need these pieces. cover is the better I felt like the frosted ones made it too difficult to see yeah I was curious how that would work like especially since they're black and white like they don't have a color if that would make it more difficult um, it looks like it sits like this and like this okay Two by four OLED plug, I think is this cover. And then, okay, 
So it says from the back side of the top case laying down on the surface, insert the OLED cover into the OLED window, line up the cutouts with the post of the aluminum. Okay. This is funny. I don't know. Some of the terminology board source uses makes me think they're trolling. So the clear cover has like this piece of plastic on it. They say use your third hand in the instructions. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. But even like some of the names they use for their like, um, just like parts and also their firmware uh, thing. I'm just like laughing. Like, bro, this plastic is so hard to get off this acrylic cover. What the heck? Oh my gosh. It's like really stuck on here. Like it's leaving behind a residue. I'm gonna have to clean this mess. The view from your top down cam is so cool, I literally have to look at another screen. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I was like, what is on here? Because it kind of leaves like a... It kind of leaves like a... Um, you can see it, like the residue from the adhesive? Like on the plastic cover? I wonder if I can just use some of my like eyeglass stuff. Did you use like isopropyl to get this off? Or how'd you get it off? I'm gonna try some of my glasses cleaner. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I figure most lenses are plastic these days. Just spraying some on my little cloth. Hey, what's up, Trey Pop? How's it going? We're building a Lulu tonight that my friend sent me. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the. Uh... Well, I have like stuff on it. That's annoying. I wonder if I can use. Yeah, it's kind of like um, when you take a sticker off of something, and it's like sticky, it's like that material. Hmm. I have, I have isopropyl. I'm just concerned that it's gonna hurt because I know it can melt like acrylic. Mm. They're resistant to mineral acids, organic acids. Rubbed it with enough friction. Okay, that's what I was thinking of doing too. Finally getting back to work tomorrow. Oh, nice. I'm like, are you excited to get back into the swing of things? Or are you sad you're not, you have to go work again? 
This is really annoying, like... <laughs> I know if th this was my board, I would be annoyed having to clean this out the box. Because yeah, it's like really stuck on there. But it seems to be coming off. It's just it's disappointing. Like somebody should, this should not be happening <laughs> in the first place. <laughs> I'm just using my shirt because weird. It's adhesive. It's like the the okay, it seems to be coming off. But yeah, it's just taking a lot of time. Or chicken nugget finger friends. No, it came from, so like, I don't know if you can see on this one. The clear piece that goes over the OLED is like covered in this plastic sheet. And when you remove the sheet, it like, maybe you just have to be like really slow with it or something. Cause the adhesive just like comes right off on the, oh yeah, okay. Maybe you just have to go really slow. Cause it seems like I kind of cut the corner of the adhesive or something. Cause yeah, like if you pull it off really fast, the adhesive stays behind. Cause yeah, this one isn't as bad as the other one. But it's basically like super stuck on there. Breathe on it with warm air, as Nick Cage said, it takes heat to activate. <laughs> I caught out money because I was a little hungover from Sunday and they made me go get a COVID test because I caught out sick and I only <laughs> worked four day weeks on it. Well, I hope you don't have COVID. Yeah, I think if you just do it really slow, Seems to be okay. I mean, it's still coming off a little bit. But still, this is not something you should have to deal with. Like, they need to get their adhesive to go, because this is ridiculous. Okay, like, see, that one wasn't as bad. But there's still some residue on it. You can see right there. See? I'm gonna try and keep pulling it like really slowly. Oh my god. Okay. Definitely helped, but there's still like this residue on the screen, which is super annoying. 
especially for the clear one like if this was on the frosted one it wouldn't matter too much do you have goo gone <gasps> wait i think i do maybe hold on let me look at my drawer Hold on, I'll be right back. I don't have Google, but I have a Clorox wipe that I'm wondering might help. Let's see if this helps. Maybe? Helps a little bit, I think. The goo must be gone. Yeah, we're not sending a gooey keyboard to my friend. No way. Now, can I just like. Hey, what's up, Soldier? Enough sleep. We're building the Lulu tonight, but we've encountered a weird issue. Basically, like the clear plastic that's on the OLED covers, it has like a adhesive residue that is not easily coming off. So we're doing the Keep Noob cleaning stream because <laughs> we have no other choice. I don't have goo on. Yeah, keep cleaning the goo goo off the Lulu. <laughs> Why is this so funny? <laughs> hey, what's up, coffee? Is Lulu an integrated lily? Uh, yeah, basically. I think the layout's very similar, um, but I don't know if they would say that or not. People get touchy about these things. Yeah, it's a cool board, but I'm really annoyed by this, um, the OLED cover, like, the plastic covering they put to protect it, it, like, leaves behind a adhesive residue. And it's like really hard to get off. Okay. We're almost done, I think. There's like one, a couple little spots. But it seems like the, uh, the Clorox wipes are definitely helping. So if you have like a disinfecting wipe, um, that might be the move. So yeah, I think my recommendation is to pull the plastic off of the cover very slowly and then use some kind of disinfecting wipe to clean it because look at that, that's, that's a lot better now. So this one is one that we did slowly but the residue is still on there. I can really see it on the... So now I'm gonna just wipey it with the with this. And hopefully it will help dissolve that mess. Resit you 
Get the goo goo off our Lulu. <laughs> I feel like that should be a t shirt or something. They're like, what are you even saying? <laughs> But yeah, it's like the wiping with the t-shirt combo, the friction, I think, helps. Start a merch line. <laughs> I have really good ideas, but I feel like, at least for t-shirt stuff, but I feel like, um, I feel like knowing, like, or how do you market like you know like if it's it could be an inside joke within like say like my twitch community but then like how i don't want to have to like have a bunch of shirts sitting around once everybody i know has purchased one <laughs> so if you know of any um uh, any print on demand holla at me because i do have some ideas They've been pretty upfront about it being an upgraded lily. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure, like, I don't know a whole lot about this board. I just remember at the time, the group I ran, I was, like, kind of looking at it with one eye. I did a bunch of application sites using Printful. Oh. Could you send me a link to that, please, Double Day? Interloper Creative has screens. I need to hit him up. Okay, because he's hilarious, number one. If you don't follow him, you should. But he also does, like, video editing. And uh, I was going to ask him to do something for me. Because I am very lazy to edit. That's why I stream on Twitch. Because <laughs> it's like... It's all live, uncut. I don't have to edit nothing. Spring. Oh, thank you. Let's open that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because, like, I know how to make, like, a Shopify store, but having to deal with, like, stocking product and whatever, you know, that's not something I'm looking to do. Have I played any Overwatch 2? I haven't. I haven't upgraded yet. It's basically re replacing Overwatch 1, right? Dang, there's still some, like, spots. We're getting closer to being done, but... Edi editing takes longer than the dang build. Yeah, see, like, I don't... And I know, like, once you get in the groove of it, you know, you have, like, some workflow things you can do to, like help with that but just learning the editing tools themselves I feel like it's a lot like I edited I edited one video into a reel for the Baka 60 polycar it was really fun, but it took me forever, and I feel like the payoff wasn't, <laughs> like, like, I mean, it was fun, but the amount of effort versus the final product was just too much. <laughs> like, I couldn't do that on a weekly basis. I'll do it on a quarterly basis. That's how much effort I <laughs> want to put in. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I think I like the live format a little better. Feels more spontaneous and fun. I feel less pressure. We're so close. There's like one tiny spot up here and then like one down here. But yeah, I think the move is like Clorox wipe and then like use the friction of wiping it on your t-shirt or like any other like microfiber cloth or something or like I think even a paper towel would work but some kind of cloth I think is probably ideal just so you don't scratch the 
cover. Okay, I think that's as good as we're gonna get. But yeah, that was hella annoying. <laughs> Board source, my recommendation include like an isopropyl wipe in your kit so people don't have to deal with this. So let's continue. So the most import important annoying part about the Lulu. It's so weird too. Like I, I don't it doesn't need to be this way. <laughs> like it just yeah, it's a very strange um thing to happen. Alright. Put the OLED cover into the OLED window. Line up the cutouts with the posts on the aluminum. Okay, so I think it goes this way. Oh, it's supposed to fit over the posts. The alu posts. Pretty tight fit over the alu posts. I'm just wiping it for fingerprints. So I push the one piece of acrylic in. So uh, if you look at these covers, the one side of them um, is like slightly raised. <clears throat> so I put the raised edge down. And then these cutouts fit over the aluminum cutouts on the case. Okay, so it'll look like this. Let's see, I think it's gonna sit a little further down once the other part is screwed in. Alright, and then there's these posts. So these will sit. So there, there's like a little little cutouts here too that match up with the the aluminum parts on the case. So this should just slide down to hold the cover into place, and then we'll screw these in from the top. Okay. Make more so okay. So my channel points are messed up right now because my, the new OBS update uh, messed up my redeems. I'm working on that. I was messing with it today, but I still haven't gotten it working. All right, what kind of keyboard do you want? We got. What do I have that's built with keycaps <laughs> that I can show on stream? <laughs> I have one. Hold on. The biggest one? Okay. I recently picked up, um, uh, I ordered some more keyboard cases. My goal is to like have all my boards in a case and not just like sitting out on my shelf. So I ordered two of the fruity keys 40% cases and then i ordered 
two of the 60% ones from Cannon Keys last night. And then I ordered some of the little cloths because I like those. Okay. <laughs> so, this board, <coughs> it's so heavy. This is the Stirka. Y'all, I need to go to the gym. This is so heavy. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Interloper Creative? <laughs> Looking for screen printing? Yeah, we were talking about, um... Uh, we are talking about merch or, like, ways to make t-shirts. <laughs> Dude, this board is so freaking heavy. I want, you want to steer? Oh, my gosh. Ugh. So the Stierka Extras, I, from what I know, talking to BA the last time about it, um, he's gonna release Extras when he finishes with the, um, with the Topra PCBs. So he's gonna run the, the Topra PCBs along with the Stierka Extras. Spoiler alert, Sturka Topra coming soon. Uh, ooh, you're printing it in your garage? Damn, that's sick. I wish I had skills. Like, that would be fun, I think. I've always wanted to try screen printing. But yeah, we were talking about, like, there's services you can do where they'll, like, print it for you and ship it out and stuff. So, Stierka Extras have not ran yet. They are sitting in his garage. <laughs> Smolka Extras, though, did uh, go sell through. Hey, Coffee got a Smolka. Hey, okay. And actually, next month, so I'm going to have another keyboard stream series with BA. Um, before, we had played uh, It Takes Two together. So, next month... Um, He's going to teach me how to design Topra PCBs and together we're going to build or we're going to design the Smolka Topra. So keep an eye out from my stream. <laughs> you just got the exclusive news. That's right, my followers get the exclusive news. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna teach how to design Topra PCBs using the Smolka as a test. Um, so yeah, follow my channel. <laughs> You'll get the news. Or actually, I also post my stream schedule every week in my Discord, so that's probably the best way to find out what's going on. Making moves to become more powerful. It was his idea, honestly. He wants to do it, so I was like, I'm down, I don't care. <clears throat> okay, so we need a two by four flathead bolt. I think it's this one. I should measure. Be afraid. <laughs> Y'all are not ready for uh, when I really become powerful and release my interest check. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. And actually, I got the last render I needed today. So the last thing I got to do... Well, I made a list. The last thing I got to do is get the dust mat picture. <gasps> Tanya, hello! I need to get the dust mat picture. I need to make a... You know how on Geek Hack they have like, where you can like, it's like a, a, a relic of the olden forum days. But you know how you can like support uh, something by putting a picture in your little like profile thing? I don't know what they call that. It's like when you post like a comment on Geek Hack and then like it shows up underneath. Signature, that's what it is. Thank you. <laughs> so 
So, yeah, I need to make one of those. And then once that's done, I will be posting. But it'll happen this month. Apparently, it just happened that this month is, in, is National Pizza Month. So that's pretty cool. I didn't time that. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> the old forum days. Yeah, so like this past weekend I was learning how to do, um, I was learning the ins and outs of BB code <laughs> and like crying myself to sleep at the same time. <laughs> BB code, it basically is like HTML, but like worse. <laughs> and I love HTML. <laughs> Because, yeah, my thing is, like, if it was HTML and CSS, like, I could style that crap to my heart's content. It would be so lit, but, yeah, we're stuck using BB codes. Frick. How does one find out about National Pizza Month? So, someone told me, um, I think it was my brother told me. Somebody told me, and I was like, what? And so then I Googled it, and then I was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, it is like a hacky version of HTML. Yeah, it's a security reasons, but still, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Somebody once told you. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I knew there would be a National Pizza Month, but I didn't know it was October. So, so yeah, it just works out perfectly. Um, but I have some fun ideas. Oh, so Geek Hack, when you post like a interest check or like a, if you post something, it's it's supposed it's written in BB code. So that's how you can like include images and um, style headings and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm only doing it for the Geek Hack. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay, we got that. No, I wish it was Markdown. <laughs> it's kind of like BB code, but like it doesn't have all of the features. It's really sad. <laughs> okay. They call this piece the OLED retention plug. Uh, okay, next we're going to do the encoder. Plug. They love the word plug. Markdown was created like six decades after Geek Hack. <laughs> Geek Hack needs an update, but uh, I mean, what you gonna do? Oh, this is cool. So this is the rotary encoder kit. Ooh, she got the clear one for those RGBs, baby. So... Um, basically in the case, if you're using the encoder, um, are these, no, they look like there's a direction. It basically fills the spot for where the switch would normally go, but it does seem like there's a direction to these. It is important to differentiate the left from the right as they're not the same. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. And these just clip into the case, it seems. Ugh. When you orient the cutout. Okay. It says, <laughs> when in doubt, sit back, take a deep breath, and imagine how this piece would look if you inserted it into the key switch location. <laughs> The weird corner's angle should continue the angle of the pointy aluminum. Oh, okay, so it goes this way. So, what they're saying is that, so one of the corners has like a little, it's not square, it's like a little, um, sticks out just a little bit. I'll show you. Focus on my hands. So see how there's this little protrusion here? What that means is that it has to sit, if it, they're saying that it extends the angle of the corner and they're talking about this corner. So if we put it here, you can see how like this line continues 
That's what we're looking for. Okay. Make sure the key switch is clear of debris. Let it rest check to make sure it's lined properly by looking straight down on it and try to ensure the top of it is laying flat, not at an angle. Okay. So they want you to just like rest it in place. And then apply even downward pressure. We did it! So once it's installed correctly, it'll look like that. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I just found a website that converts Markdown to BB code. I just read, oh, that's a good idea. What I found, someone told me was a good trick is that you can, uh, when you go to like someone else's geek hack page, if you um, go to where like the reply is and you hit quote, it will copy all of the previous um, code and you can just copy paste this. <laughs> <laughs> and then just add in your own content. <laughs> all right, we did it. Okay, next we will solder the encoders to the PCBs. Yeah, forms are blue. But we do what we gotta do to let the people know that the pizza is out there waiting for them. <laughs> the pizza is ready. <laughs> okay. I got so my soldering mat is getting washed right now and that quote button is more like decode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So I'm using my little mat. Especially since all we got to solder really is the encoders and that's it. So I'm just installing them. Like this. So one side will have the two pins. The other side will have three pins. And then there's the little like alignment pins on the bottom. So I'm just going to line those up, push down, so it'll sit like that, and then we're going to solder the pins on the back side. It would be much harder to advertise ICs and group buys without Geek Hack. Yeah, I think it's really the only centralized place that like you can go to like That people will give you feedback, but also, like, it's a decent place for advertising beyond, like, Reddit, which Reddit sucks. So. I think the other thing, too, is, like... There's kind of like no real set rules about, you know, what constitutes like a completed or ready IC, which does two things. One, it makes it, it's good because you can get feedback without like pressure. But then the other part is people will post things that aren't finished. <laughs> Have you seen the Geek Hack IC? Group I bought for Discord. What? You have to share. I haven't seen that. Is that the um the one where it posts like when somebody posts a new uh post to Geek Hack? Cause I think I've seen that maybe in a couple people's Discords. Okay, here we go. The one pin on this one what doesn't wanna go through the hole. <coughs> now it sounds like they need some engineering management for design reviews, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's why it's like kinda taking me a long time to like 
post my interest check because I want it to feel like ready if that makes sense but then at the same time you don't want to overdo it because you want to be open to feedback that's the whole purpose of an interest check is like getting feedback seeing what the people want because if you design something that nobody wants to buy then like what's the point like okay Get our slaughter. I'm gonna use tiny baby slaughter today. Since the pads around the hot swap socket are kind of small, so I don't need a ton of slaughter. So we're gonna use the baby one. This board is humongous. I'm sorry. I'm gonna move my keycaps actually. <laughs> Just so I have more space. There you go. Alright. Called Geek Watch. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think I might have seen somebody who used that. But. Yeah, it sounds cool. Because, yeah, trying to, like, browse through Geek Hack is, like, pain. <laughs> I'm just kind of cleaning the tip and tinning it a little bit. I need to use my... I have that like tinning cleaner thing. I need to use that. Time. easier than trying to figure out if it's a new post oh yeah yeah that's true because if it's like someone commented on it it'll bring it back up to the top right so if you've never soldered a rotary encoder before they usually will have three pins on the one side There's usually three pins on one side, two pins on the other, and then these two uh, side pins. The two side pins are just for alignment and to keep it in the PCB. The three pins are for the turning adjust, like key codes. So when you turn the encoder, um, it knows that it's moving back and forth. The top two are for the switch capability. So if you push down on the encoder, it will actuate. Um, so now you know. <laughs> but yeah, these two side ones, like, I don't think you have to solder them in, but it's a good idea just because it connects them to ground and it helps them stay more stable. It makes it a little tricky with this particular board because it does have a hot swap socket touching part of the the encoders so I just put a little bit on the one side you can see it here but this encoder leg is sitting like flush on the hot swap socket so I just added some um some stuff on this side hot swap rotary encoder win <laughs> I feel like there are I think one of the things is like there are a lot of different kinds of rotary encoders um that like the keyboard hobby doesn't use yet i think part of it is like firmware related but um i feel like there should be there's also ones that are like rotated at a 90 degree there's ones that are like smd mounted so they sit flush there's lots of different kinds. But yeah, this one is also a little bit different in terms of the um, 
they have like a custom knob for these boards that's like pretty low profile. <clears throat> um i want to i really want people to use the 90 degree ones or like metal mouse wheels Ooh, that'd be cool yeah i think that's definitely an area that people in the keyboard hobby could experiment with like a unknown frontier <laughs> All right, I want to test the PCB <clears throat> before we assemble everything. And we can also, I think, install the OLEDs now. Unpackage them. Okay, yeah, so this is really nice. I'm kind of shocked they did this, but it's great. So the... OLEDs come with like a hot swap socket already installed so you can see the four pin socket here on either side it also comes with uh, OLEDs that have the pins already soldered on so you can see here and it does have a header I'm wondering if the header is fine being that tall but i think it might be in order to clear the um the usb port so basically all you should need to do is just push it into the pcb just be careful also the pins are kind of pokey so maybe you can use like the foam to help push that in <laughs> So you can see here, so the sockets, basically the header sits between the OLED and the sockets down here. I imagine if it's not sitting fully flush or it's too tall, you could probably cut these pins a little bit on the bottom. Um, but this is nice, not having to solder an OLED. <laughs> Okay, I'm just using the foam to kind of keep the pins from po poking me. So the OLED sits like that. You can also peel this um, little red piece off. This is just to protect the OLED in transit. When I first got these, I was like scared that it was going to like ruin the OLED or something if I peeled it off. Um, it also comes with another set of, uh, with another four pin socket. So definitely hold on to this. These are handy. You never know. So you can kind of create your own hot swappable OLED in the future. Alright, so let's get our cables. I'm just going to use the one that came with it. I'm not sure if this came with the kit or if my friend supplied this. And then... I'm wondering... I know they have their own like firmware thing, but does it work with Via or not? Oh, it came with the kit? Okay, cool. That's good. 
Doesn't work with you. Okay, we're gonna have to download their thing. Boo. They say you can put QMK on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I figured you could put QMK on it. Like, um, that's like the only one of the main drawbacks of this board. I would say is that is the firmware part of it. Um, I mean, I, I haven't used their firmware yet, so I don't know. Uh. We'll, we'll find out together how it is, but... <laughs> okay, let's see. Help. Here. Okay, flashing. You're too lazy to try it. Well, I'm, I'm kind of curious because uh, there's been mixed feelings about this firmware. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, so it's called PEG, which I think is kind of funny. Um, download. It doesn't even work the website though. It won't let me download it. Like it says, click here to learn more and download. You click on it and there's nothing. This is great. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Let me see what we can do. I mean, I'm assuming if it's the same as the Lily 50, I'm sure there's probably a way to port it to Vial. The main thing is just knowing which pins connect to what and what the matrix looks like. Okay, FAQ, build guide, flashing guide. Here we go. Okay, bruh. Okay, well, if you want to creep on their software, here is their thing. It's called PEG. <laughs> uh, oh, that's the other window. Oh, I can just move it over here. Um, the keyboard flashing solution you've always wanted. So this has been kind of controversial because it does require for all of the features that you have a subscription. Hey, hello, Ekachis. Thanks for following. Welcome to my stream. I'm Ellie, AKA Keep New. We're working on uh, building this board and checking out the firmware. <laughs> So there has been a little bit of controversy uh, just because of the, there is like a paid aspect to this resource. So they have like a license. Is it forever or is it per month? So, okay. So this was the interesting part of this. They, um, <laughs> yeah, so it was interesting because so they developed this program um, themselves, whatever. And obviously there's costs associated with hosting, uh, you know, a website as well as like uh, to, for people to download things off of. Um, what I thought was interesting was if you don't want to pay for it, you can get the pro version free by submitting boards to their repo, which I thought was kind of interesting, like, but, um, yeah. So basically like the, there's bas most of it is in the free version, but there are some that are, uh, you need to have the pro version for. The main ones that I saw were like the OLED support. <clears throat> Um, which this is not currently available in other software, like keyboard software stuff. So I kind of get it, but yeah, I, in terms of like, it's, uh, the licensing part of it, like it is a little bit sussy because of QMK is open source and it's supposed to be like, if you use it in your other projects, you're supposed to also open source that. 
So the legality, sketchy a little bit, but I do understand. I feel like too, like if they're gonna make you pay for it, they need to maintain it. So that's the other part of this is like, are they constantly maintaining? Um, but yeah. I think if you aren't already aware of like the keyboard, <clears throat> like firmware options out there currently, and you're, this is like your first board, it's not that big of a deal, but like, yeah, I would think it's just a little weird considering there are free alternatives. So, but anyway, I want to see if I can install this without restarting my computer. <laughs> also, if it breaks my computer, I'll be real mad. Okay, so this is installing. If it crashes my stream, then we can rage, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, so they downloaded pretty fast. Uh, so here's what it looks like. Let me see if I can make this bigger. There's no QMK in this? Okay. Is it based off of KMK? That's the, like, Raspberry Pi stuff, right? Oh, um, so this keyboard here is called the Stierka. Uh, let me see if I can. It was designed by Blind Assassin. Um, he hasn't released extras for it yet. So it's very expensive. I will say that this board is very expensive, but I really love it and it's huge. <laughs> Oh, it's built on Circuit Python. Okay, that makes sense. Hey, what's up, Switch Doctor? Everyone, go follow Switch Doctor. She's gonna be partner soon, and she's going to forget all of us. But it's okay because we love her. <laughs> it's okay. We're proud of you. <laughs> Please forget us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was very expensive and part of there's different reasons but basically like it's the same size as a tkl but it's taller than a tkl it's huge but but yeah and also it uses a brass plate and weight was the other part of it it was just very expensive <laughs> no foam pits if you do twitch on down under <laughs> No, that was so sad. Did you see that? Um, did you see that girl? She broke her back. Ugh. That had to have been so painful. Like back injuries just generally are like horrendous. But to ha like hit your butt, like tailbone injuries are some of the most painful thing ever. And then on top of that, to have the compression break your back into places, that is wild. Oh, there were other people that got hurt. Dang, that's wild. Yeah, everyone go follow Switch Doctor. She's trying to hit partner. We're manifesting it. It's gonna happen. <laughs> All the cool kids are here and then there's Trade Splatter. <laughs> I don't know if Trade Splatter would dis disagree with you. Okay, let's try plugging in this board and see what happens. I have to drive home. Hey, yeah. Well, thanks for tuning in, girl. It's happening. It's work. Oh! It's blowing out my eyeballs. Okay. Only one side has the LEDs on. <laughs> okay, so this is ready to go. How come one side is blowing out my eyeballs? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. There it goes. Dang, it is bright. <laughs> This is wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm typing in the future. This is Tron. <laughs> she even tried getting up. Yeah, I don't know how she she tried to get up off the ground after that. That was wild. <laughs> okay, so OLED. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, in order to use some of these features, you gotta like have the pro account. Which it just feels sad when you, I just hate subscriptions generally. Insert keyboard is brighter than my future joke here. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's really bright though. It's nice. Let's 
see if the bot yeah and the bottom ones are turning on too i will say this led configurator is pretty cool and it looks like you i think if you do the like pro you can customize like every keys led but this is pretty nice okay so these are <laughs> volume dn <laughs> It's interesting. They need to increase the size of their font because it's so tiny. Like, my eyes can't read this. But I'm also an old, so there's that. This is pretty cool. I'm not mad at this. Do they have a switch matrix tester? Options, download more key maps. I don't think they have one. They should get one. <laughs> Trades. <laughs> hey, what's up? Thank you for subscribing, Rubber Duckies. Welcome to Light Central. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, I don't know if they have a. Um, a matrix tester which I would like that or even like a way to test the keys I'm gonna trust that the switches are working fine um, this encoder is working the fact that it's all lighting up I think is good enough for now Dang. <laughs> Thank you, Static, for the, the sub for Switch Doctor, our homie. Bruh, thank you. You're the best. <laughs> okay. I feel confident finishing the assembly now. But. Yeah, that was, let's see, Baka for a little bit. I think it was just taking a bit for it to install the drivers and stuff or whatever it needed. Okay, let us continue with our journey. Ugh. Dang, this TRS connector is like kind of tight. Something else I noticed was like the OLED, if you don't push it all the way down in, it'll kind of like sag. So I push it back in and it's like sitting level now. So just be aware. Okay, let's get back to our build guide. OLEDs, now we can put the switches into the plate. Okay. Oh, so the switches we're using today, um, I was actually sent them by Vala Supply. Um, uh, Vala hooked me up with some switches to try out. So these are the the Vala electric switches. Uh, let me pull up. Because my friend said she liked linear, so I, I lubed the linear switches. Um, let me pull this up. Oh my gosh. Let's scale down again. I need to work on my like scene situation. So, I picked up, oh, they sent me these two, the Vala electric switches and the Shogun switches. So the ones we're using today uh, are the electric switches. So these are a linear, um, it uses a palm stem. The top housing is called PME, which I think is like a new thing they're using. And then the bottom housing is nylon. Use a 68 gram double spring uh, PCB mount. And then I lube them with 205 grade zero. Um, so yeah, they seem like stock, they seemed pretty uh, smooth, but they were pretty loud. <laughs> like, like, I don't know what, if you know what I'm talking about, but like they just sounded really loud. Definitely lubing them muted them quite a bit. Um, but yeah, my friend said that she liked, uh, 
She said that she likes uh, linears and also like heavier linears, which these are 68 grams, so I think these will work well. Um, but yeah, so the Lulu has an integrated plate, meaning that the plate is machined into the case. So it's best to just pop a couple switches in and then put the PCB in. Okay. So they're saying, okay. So they said to put it this way and like align the switches. I would maybe also just support the backs of the the switches. Kind of just holding the hot swap socket in place while pushing the switch in, making sure it's flush in the plate. They look kind of nice. The, the PCB sits pretty flush with the top part of the case. And then as I'm putting switches in, I'm just going to try and support the hot swap socket that's behind the switch I'm putting in. <clears throat> the kale hot swap sockets are kind of notorious for breaking. <laughs> um, so it's best to just like give it that extra mechanical support on the back while you're pressing them in. Just give it a little fingy hug from behind. Exactly. <laughs> You're hugging your switches. <laughs> little hug, little keys. <clears throat> I'm so like paranoid about like getting smudges on the OLED <laughs> now. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> We just want to hug and support our switches <laughs> in whatever they're doing. <laughs> Go bro goo goo off the <laughs> Get that goo goo off the Lulu. <clears throat> yeah, that was really annoying. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that was super annoying. <clears throat> <clears throat> it should not be like this. Okay. Yeah. I'm guessing if you wanted the full, like, RGBs... <clears throat> experience like especially since it has in switch you might go for a switch that has a clear top housing um the nice thing is these are hot swap boards so like it's easy to switch out the switches if you want but these are what i had on hand and i think my friend will enjoy them but yeah the main thing she needed <clears throat> soldered was the uh the encoder i'm really happy that they uh pre-soldered the the oleds i think that was a smart move especially considering the majority of people who buy this board are probably getting it because of the hot swap this makes for easy assembly <laughs> so I was thinking of ways of like when Pizza Rat does go into group buy, which I'm not expecting until next year. Oh, 
Oh, thank you for following. Spody Brody, what's up? <laughs> Um, what I was thinking of was, like, ways to build hype around it or whatever. Because basically, it's such a niche set. I'm going to have to freaking market my butt off, like, honestly. <laughs> so, I had an idea of, like... Because group buys are usually, what, like, a month? So, I was thinking that maybe, like, um, I could do, like... Like a month of like, or until it hits MOQ, do like every day something pizza related. That was just my idea, but I don't know. Anyone see the cosplay TK? I haven't. Do you have a link you can share? Or was it on Geek Hack? Hey, what's up, Martin Luther Bling? Cosplay TK. Oh, here, interest check. <laughs> Let's watch a Disney Channel movie. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but um, I was looking, my mom was watching like uh, Under Wraps on Disney Channel or on Disney Plus. Apparently they remade the original Under Wraps. Cause remember the first one had like that little nerdy kid Apparently they remade it and they have a second one now. I'm like, what the heck? Oh, this is kind of cool. <laughs> it's a waifu keyboard. <laughs> Shout out to all the weebs. That's funny. The color's pretty. Everyone fill out the icy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they remade it. Um, was it Under Wraps? Because the original one came out in 1997. I remember because the mummy was really creepy. And then they remade it last year. And then there's a new one this year. I don't know. I feel like they, that's their thing now. It's just like remaking older movies. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, I put in some switches to anchor it. Now I'm just gonna give my PCB a little hug while we put in the switches. <laughs> I feel like this one has bent pin. I don't know, it doesn't. That's good. Yeah, I'm curious because it doesn't have a switch tester, like a switch matrix tester, like how do we test the PCB? I guess we're just going to do it manually, but it's kind of annoying. I just watched actually on Disney Plus last night, there's a new like movie. It's like a Marvel movie. It's really short too. What was it called? It's like werewolf something. <laughs> What is it called? Oh yeah, Werewolf by Night. How does it work? How does it, uh... Like... Are you talking about the Werewolf movie? Because if so, how does that work into the MCU? One World by Night. No, it's called Werewolf. It has, um... What's his name? Gabriel Bernal? Yeah, Gail Garcia Bernal. I'm not talking about a movie in the sun or LARPing. You're Disney minus? Oh man. Yeah, I signed up for Disney Plus like when it first came out. They had this like three year deal so that I prepaid for three years and it ended up only being like $1.50 per month or something like that. Oh, it's involved with Moon Knight. Okay. Yeah, I was curious because I was like, this has to, like, connect to another movie. They're just, like, being sneaky. Baby, come here. We have a visitor. I don't know if she's going to come visit us, though. Baby. I think she's looking at something out the window. Baby. Come here. She's 
so silly. Baby's been bad, so she keeps um opening the like filter. She takes the filter and the top part of the fountain off, their water fountain, and just gets water everywhere. <laughs> hey, what's up, Helbent? How's it going? Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Come say hi. Let's see. She's coming. Come here. Pepita keeps stealing her seats. <laughs> Come here, baby. Come here. I'm trying to trick her. Come here. Come here. Hey. Come here. I tricked you. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. Say, I like water. And I like turning on the sink. And I like messing up the fountain. It's really fun. And I like showing off my butt on Twitch. She's stepping on my pillow on my chair. <laughs> Baby, come here. Come down. <laughs> Baby, stop. Go. Go down. <laughs> go down. Here, go say hi. There you go. Good girl. She's getting bigger. She Look, she's the size of a, a keyboard now. Not a 40%. A Stierka. <laughs> there are other crossovers, I think, too, but I know this is a storyline on a huge helmet. Oh, okay. Baby. She's so naughty. She's trying to, like, paw at the window. There's, like, some weird weather happening right now, too. Like, it was, like, thundering earlier, which is unusual. Come here. Come say hi. She's like, nah, dude, I'm gonna sit over here. What do you think about the Mario movie? I Okay, I think the movie itself looks amazing. But the, like, reveal of the Mario voice is, like, such a letdown. His dumping is unacceptable. <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> But I thought, like, the toad looked really cute and, like, the environments look amazing. But Mario himself is, like, kind of disappointing. But also, I have, like, strong anti-Chris Pratt bias, so there's that, too. <laughs> Once I saw a picture of that as a joke, now I can't unsee it. <laughs> he sounds like Linda. <laughs> yeah, it's like he, like... He's, like, trying to do a New York accent, but is scared of doing a New York accent, if that makes sense. That's how it sounded to me. Like, he didn't commit. <laughs> Sounds like the kid who went to college in New York. <laughs> eh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch this video later. That's amazing. <laughs> Alright, we got all our switches installed. This board is called the Lulu. It's a hot swap uh, split ortholinear board. It has columnar stagger, which is... It's not super dramatic, but basically it's meant to mimic like the shape of our fingers, since our fingers are not straight across. So like, you know, if I put my fingers here, right, this finger is more bent. With columnar stagger, it's meant to like mimic the shape of your hand so that like you're not reaching as far out or, or like it's more evenly spaced for your fingies. All right. Um, so next step, we need to install the encoder knobs. If you have the encoder regime. Okay, so simply insert the rotary encoder knob onto the stem. The knob can only be placed onto the stem in a single direction. Okay. 
Did you still need to ask me something? Remember the last time I caught you? Oh, yes. Actually. Okay, I have an interest check coming soon, Hellbent. Um, so I wanted to ask you about artisan collabs. Because I don't know if you've... Have you done one recently? I know you did one for aesthetic, but I can't remember. Either way, it would be dope. If there could be a Hellbent artisan. Haven't done one since then. <laughs> Yeah. I was trying to remember. Oh yeah, you did do the, yeah, GMK Copper. But it's been more like col like colorways, right? Because you did Tarot like a while ago. Okay, I'm trying to put the knob on. You'll likely hear a click. That is okay. It is the press down function of the rotary encoder. Okay, let me hold the back of the PCB. Do it again with the new sculpts. Hey, yeah. Okay. Well, let me know, cause I love tarot. <laughs> but yeah, I hit you up, cause um, the group I wouldn't be for until sometime next year. But um, I don't know how far ahead like people ask about artists and collabs and stuff. I figure more time is better, but to prepare. Okay. So yeah, I just slide the encoder knob on. I'm just supporting the switch that's behind it. I'm a, I'm a DJ baby. Okay. Yeah. I'll hit you up a uh, helmet cause there's a lot of um, interpretation for this key <laughs> So I'm excited. <laughs> Alright. Go to the main switches. Okay, tenting legs. So the next step is to put the legs onto the bottom half of the PCB or the case. Let me get the other half. The voice actor from Mario is listed on the cast for the Mario movie. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Hopefully. We can be less disappointed. <laughs> okay, so. It says. What have I done? Okay, these are the screws for the tenting. Two by four millimeter. What was the other one? Two by six. Okay. Is that right? Okay, yeah. When you measure a, a screw, is it from like the top of the the head to the bottom. Okay, yeah, I think that's right. I'm always like doubting myself. <laughs> it's bad. Okay. So this one. Oh, I hit something. So you gotta position the legs. Oh, okay. So here's the bottom of the tent scene. And I believe it sits like this. Yeah, because it wouldn't sit that way. What I'm thinking is I can put the, like one screw in. And then the other. These screws seem kind of short, but maybe that's just me. Oh, they sit at like an angle too. Flip. 
Where did it go? What? What just? What is happening? It just disappeared. Oh, here we go. See, this is why I love this dust mine and hate this dust mine because it hides dirt really well, but also everything else. <laughs> But I mostly love this dust map because it's really cute. Let me just double check the direction. Okay, yeah, it's gonna sit like this. How do you do this in an easy way? Okay, I'm gonna hold it in with my screwdriver. And then position the leg over it. But question for the Americans in chat. When you watch the weather report, do they report estimated rainfall in milliliters? They measure it in inches. USA. 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 So they'll say, like, we're gonna get two inches of rain or something. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Is that, what, how do they measure in Australia? Cats and dogs measured in 7-Eleven big gulps? Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Cause how do they measure in Australia? In kangaroos? It's like, it's gonna be a joey high for today. Milliliters? Oh. Yeah, I think it's measured in like inches of like if it was spread out over an area. It just fell in my slippers. Come back. Oh my gosh, everything is falling. You <laughs> measured in drop bears? I got this secret lab chair and it has this pillow with like. It has magnets. They're evil? I know they got diseases. Okay, this is really annoying. I'm not happy with this hardware. And it's making me think I put the wrong hardware in the other thing. Because these are so short. Because these are the long ones. And these ones... Yeah, cap head bolt. Okay, these are the ones for the outside. Ugh. You'd be tempted to just sit on the pillow. It is very comfortable. But, yeah, it attaches with magnets on the back of the chair. And I haven't really had the issue with it until today. Maybe because Baby was standing on it earlier. You're probably going to get floods in Victoria tomorrow. Oh, dang. The wiper just broke? What the? Yeah, at least it's the back one, but still. That's scary. Okay, I'm a little bit annoyed right now because... The screws that come with the tenting kit are, like, super short. Like, I feel like they need to be, like, two mils longer. Either that or the hole on this side is not machined correctly. Which it could be that too. Because. Wait, let me try it on this side. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so these are the screws that they put in there. But look how tiny. Like, it doesn't even go all the way out of the thing. What is happening? Okay, this is annoying. Wait. Let me put the screws back. Because, like, so basically there's a... There's like a, um, I forget what they call these, like a helicoil or something that sits inside of the polycarbonate piece. So when you screw into it, you're screwing a metal screw into the metal of this helicoil. The problem is the holes they machined. Oh, maybe I put, no, I did put it on the right side. The, the holes they machined on this side. So like if I put the, the screw through the hole, it sits at an angle, which is fine. But then, if we look on the other side, look how, like, barely there's, like, any screw sticking out. Like, I just don't feel like it's very secure. Like, I feel like it needs, like, an extra millimeter or something. So I'm gonna try and screw it in. On so that one went in. But the one on the other side, I'm having issues. Oh. Eh, come back. <laughs> I wonder if I just like position it and have it sitting the weight of the case will help. But yeah, I feel like this is an oversight. Like, I think they. Should have used a longer screw. But it doesn't seem to be catching in this one. And then, yeah, see, and then it just like fell out of the other one. This is not good. I don't like this. Um, It seems like they do give you extra hardware. Well, let me just double check on the... Okay, because it has, I think, I think these are extra screws. I'm going to just try using these and see what happens because they do have the like flush head. So, hey, thanks for following SC66P. What's up? Um, we're just struggling building this keyboard. <laughs> I hope you're having a good night. Yeah, I want to see if this will work. Because these feel like the appropriate length of screw. The other one seems too short. Okay, yeah, these feel appropriate. Okay, yeah, see, that was way easier. The other one, the screws are just way too short. So look at, so these are the ones, these are the extras that came with the kit. And these are the ones that came with the tenting kit. Like, this is too short. This was like an oversight, I think. Luckily, it came with extra screws, because that would be super annoying, like. Hey, what's the? Oh, so this board is called the Stierka. Um, it was sold in group by I think it was a while ago. I think in 2020. <laughs> Let me see if I can find the geek hack. Um, yeah, so the the group by was. Oh, right here. Oh yeah, the group I was like January of 2021. Here's a link to the Geek Hack post. Um, but yeah, it's designed by Blind Assassin. His company name is called Victus Design. Um, yeah, 
I know he hasn't sold the extras yet, so keep an eye on his Discord if you're interested. Um, but yeah, this board is huge. <laughs> Someone asked me to switch out to my largest keyboard, and that's the one. <laughs> yeah, I, I like having the left side macro column, just because I think it's like it's pretty fun because you can um, you can like put artisans or whatever you want. Looks awesome. Also glad to see people building with Duroc Linears. I feel like they don't get enough love. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. We do not discriminate against linear switches here. <laughs> or switches in general. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, my friends, my friend at Vala Supply sent me these. So these are called the electric switches. I, I want to say that, um... Let me see if I can find the page. I don't I don't know if they're Durox. I think they were manufactured by Texi possibly. Oh here, I found the link. You know what I was looking at though? Um hey what's up Dov? How you doing? Um something I saw the other day on Canon Keys website because I was ordering some um keyboard cases let me pull this up and um i saw they had this new switch called the duroc baby kangaroo oh no it's gateron sorry and i was like what the heck is this because i was looking to um re get my, i'm getting a board from my dad i'm gonna build him and um this is called the gateron baby kangaroo it reminds me of like the Inkaroos, the, like the color is similar, but it has like the, not the like box stem. Finished up a cool new full size board tonight. Oh nice, Milmax 2 big boy board. <laughs> What's the name of it? Did you, de did you design it or you, um, or someone sent it to you? What you got? Yeah, I just saw this, uh, yesterday. I just snagged some P3 MM stems from CK. Yeah, those are kind of cool. I saw those too. The, uh, is these ones, the MM Switch series, right? I thought this was cool because you could, like, kind of, like, customize the colors of your switches. Because I'm basic and that's, you know, what I want to do. <laughs> are they all linears? Or, okay, yeah, linears, JWK. Okay. But yeah, I was like, you could make some, like, knockoff, uh, Magic Girl switches with, like, the pink housings and the green stems. But yeah, they look really good. The proto, I don't know the name of it. It's a Heine PCB. Oh, nice. Someone said they're long pole, so I felt obligated. <laughs> yeah. I've been messing around more with, like, uh, linear switches, and I find that I like the sound of long poles. I know they get kind of memed on sometimes. Or people get are just like, oh, it's another long pole switch. But I'm like, y'all are a bunch of haters. <laughs> I never understood the preference for colors on switches. Bruh, Martin Luther Bling. Why do we put match keyboard colors with the case and the in the keycaps and the desk mats? Why do we do anything? No, I don't hate on long poles. I'm saying there's haters out there. <laughs> that analog stick on the split key oh so this is a rotary encoder so uh, you can map this to like I think right now it's set to page up page down the one on the other half is a uh, volume you can also set like a because um, you can also click it to like pushes down um, but yeah, they're pretty fun okay so now we have to connect the pieces together Oh, with our last set of... Okay, let me put these in bags. I'm really annoyed about the tenting screws situation. I'm gonna put these in here. The board is called the Fossil. Oh, nice. Wait, is the Fossil... Does it have, like, a dinosaur on the weight? Like a... Like a T-Rex in the ground kind of fossil it would be cool to set mouse controls to them yeah you can actually do that um 
these ones, these particular encoders are not super easy to uh, to turn. So I don't know if, if it would be as useful, but you could do that if you wanted to. Um, QMK supports uh, mouse controls and like PS2 stuff. So did you also know that QMK you can set up receipt printers <laughs> using QMK? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in QMK that we don't necessarily need or use, but it's there. Hey, what's up, Nathan Alpha Man? What's up? Thanks for following. How you doing, Nene? <laughs> I think the last time I saw you was at the meetup. Alright. So this one is a hex. Wow! I dropped the screw again. This always happens to me. <laughs> you got busy during SF meetup? Oh, no worries. Yeah, um... SF meetup was lit. It was kind of like last minute small kind. But I had a lot of fun. And I got to meet some new people. But we're having another meetup. <laughs> we just got confirmation today. Los Angeles, November 5th. Mark your calendars. Um, we'll be posting more info probably this week. But downtown LA is going to be lit. <laughs> I just sketch keyboard though. I'm telling you, that would be pretty fun. I think, and we can make it happen. I'm not going to lie. It's possible. I forget who I was talking to. Oh, it was the Gridiron. So the Gridiron's PCB actually supports four rotary encoders, one in each corner of the keyboard. And I was, they were like, what do you do with like two rotary encoders in the bottom? I'm like, etch a sketch, baby. <laughs> but yeah, if you don't know Nathan Alpha Man, who are you? You should know him because we're going to show his keycap sets in a little bit <laughs> yeah know me see <laughs> if you don't know him fake <laughs> or you weren't around two years ago <laughs> all right let's put this one The other thing I've been working on is um, December is coming up faster than I would like. <laughs> and so I've already started working on Keebsmiths for this year. If you don't know what that is, it's a charity event that um, myself, Jenly Bean, and Davis of 3D Keebs put on every December. So the 12 days leading up to Christmas Day, there will be a different stream with giveaways. And then on Christmas Day is a 12 hour stream split up between four different people. Um, and it's all in support of a different charity each year. This year, we're gonna, last year we did um, Black, Black Girls Code. This year we're doing um, an organization called DIY Girls. And they teach uh, like elementary through high school girls about STEM, technology, and engineering. I'm actually meeting with them tomorrow in the morning um, to discuss our stream for this year. So it's going to be fun. But yeah, last year we raised a little over $16,000. And then this year I think our goal, because last year I think we started our goal at about 5000 but this year, I think we're going to start our goal at 10. Um, something I thought was really cool was like last year, the girls raised, they needed 10 grand to do their summer camp. So my, my, I'm going to talk to them tomorrow, but I'm hoping that we can arrange it so that like, ideally our donations will go towards like paying for their summer camp. Cause how lit would that be? Just be like, yeah, we paid for these kids. Like. 
All right. Oh, is it dinner time? Come on, Bean. We got. It's time for Winnie's dinner, and she. You have to like coerce her. Like, look, she's sitting right here. Come on, Bean. Wake up. <laughs> she's sleeping. <laughs> Come on. Good girl. You did it. <laughs> she's so funny. All right, so let's put some keycaps on this. We're gonna be using a set called GMK Polybius. Designed by our very own Nathan Alpha Man. Look how cute. Which one is you? Are you this one? Or are you this one? Or this one? <laughs> I like this. So cute. <laughs> you don't have to reveal your secrets. <laughs> no one's ever asked me that. I mean, I think you have nice hair, so I'm gonna say either this one or this one. This is the one knocked down on the ground. I'm the one creeping behind the machine. <laughs> But yeah, the new boxes for GMK are like a million times better. Oh my gosh. Also, you got the cool... Even I am Bolivius. <laughs> That's me. You heard it here officially from Nathan Alpha Man. <laughs> I'm gonna say that's you because I like the outfit. It's real cute. So cute. I feel like... People don't think about art box box art, but I like it. Hooray me, I can officially afford the Matrix coming up. I'll take being the tall one. <laughs> nice. Is that that's the uh, the Corsa, right? The they have so many colors with that board. It's pretty wild. Okay, let's now go double check this board. Cause yeah, it would have Z, A, Q, so it would have a number. Okay. I'm wondering if the best way, I probably, since it has tenting, I would probably just hold the board like this when putting caps on, just cause you don't want to put a lot of pressure on here. Ooh, these would just sound nice. We'll see if I can type on a tented board. This will be the true test. I'm gonna take this out for a second. It's funny because when I started typing on split keyboards, um, I found out that I use my right hand to hit the number six because I kept trying to like reach across. <laughs> I found this out using Alice layout. <laughs> Stressing a little since this is a layout I never cross check base kit for. I think it should be fine. It's mostly just one use, so I figured it doesn't all have to be perfect. It's like one use and then I think 1.5 U for the thumb cluster. But yeah, the nice thing about Polybius is that the modifier keys are novelty, so like there's no legends on them, so you can just use them for whatever you feel like. It makes compatibility easier. Do you need double B for this board? That's a good question. Let me look. I don't think so, since it's ortho. Let's see if I can find a picture. Images. Ah yes, all their pictures show blanks. <laughs> it's like yeah I, th I don't think there's double b i think since it's ortho um it's just a single column because yeah alice layout usually you'll have two b's all i'm saying is the double y revolution is coming so prepare yourselves <laughs>
But yeah, if you have the tent thing for sure, like just hold the case while you put the keycaps on. <laughs> double Y in Revolution. <laughs> no, double Y. Double G and H, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the, uh, I think it's the Keychron. I forget which Keychron it was, but the Alice one they did. And originally they had double G. I think it still has the double G support on the PCB. And I was like, it's beginning. It's starting. <laughs> Personally, I like a bar homing keys over scoops. Double G. It looks so weird on the piece on the keyboard. It was really funny. <laughs> Cause it just had this like big old cutout. Hydration. Can't imagine reaching over to hit G with my right hand, right? I didn't see any lightning, but I heard the thunder. The thunder was going wild today. And it was like bright outside. It was so weird. <clears throat> I think I'm a left hand B boy. Yeah, I'm left hand B. The right hand one is just for decoration. Sometimes I put an artist in there. <laughs> First one I saw was on my way home from the post office. Oh wow. Yeah, it was like right around like five o'clock. Like it was thundering a lot. But I didn't see any lightning here. <laughs> this set does have double B if you need it. Okay, wait, I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised how good this sounds. You guys can't hear it yet, but for what it is, like, it sounds pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These switches sound nice. They are like kind of loud, but I kind of like them. I also got some more linears to try because I won the oolong switches at the last meetup I went to. Because <laughs> I went to the UCI meetup and they were giving away a bunch of stuff. And that one, like, 110 oolong switches. As I win stuff frequently. <laughs> Alright, now it is time to figure out how we do the mod keys, because... I basically am just going to go by Rogue, so... Um, you can see how the modifier keys, they all have, like, cool squigglies and stuff. So... We're just kind of going to go row by row. This is one of the arrow keys. Um, so yeah, row one, we could do... I see there's a ortho board with the recommended layout. Oh, heck yeah! Let's, I'm d one of those people where I'm like looking at the render <laughs> and just recreating that because I have no imagination. <laughs> okay. The Atlas, that's right. Okay, sweet. So, we want this one. Out. 
two. This board is so cute. Row three. What do you do for them? So, um, basically you'll put them on a layer. So you'll basically hold down like a function key or something and then activate that secondary layer. Um, a lot of times these kind of boards will actually be missing the number row as well. Like the corn is like this. Um, but yeah, you just use like different layers and you can program them in. The other thing too about this is because you have the OLEDs, you can also program it so it will show you visually which layer you're currently on. So we can mess with that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, you like use your brain and a combination of codes and stuff to, to make it work. <laughs> ogres. <laughs> yes, you use the ogres to get your layers. <laughs> okay. Dang, this board is really friggin' cute. And this keycap set. How long until Shrek keyboard? <laughs> well, who is Shrek owned by? Is Shrek... It's DreamWorks, right? Is DreamWorks part of Sony? Bruh. Somebody tip off novel keys. <laughs> Actually, don't tip them off. I will propose something because some of these, I'm sorry, but some of these license sets have been very boring for my eyes. And it's been very sad and disappointing. Like, how are you going to do a Ghostbuster set with no Slimer key? Come on. I was so disappointed. Oh my gosh, it sounds really good. It's super loud, but I like it. Wow. Tenting feels so interesting. Dang. This is going to convince me to get a board like this. Dang it. Okay. Yeah, see, Martin Luther Bling knows. <laughs> I'm very passionate about this particular thing. <laughs> it was so annoying. <laughs> Cause yeah, like what's the whole point if there's no Slimer? Like, come on. Okay, we have one. We're gonna need to look for two more keys. If anything, there's for sure arrows we could use. That's not it. Yeah, I think we're going to need to use the arrows. Okay, let me switch some things around. Because I have an idea. What I'm thinking is... We'll do like... This. And then we'll do... Hey, what's up, Search Doctor? She's back! We'll do the two arrows pointing in. I found your officially licensed shirt keyboard. <laughs> Show me the goods! Okay, and then for the Lulu, is this a 1.5 or 1.25? I swear if this is a virus. Oh, it won't let show me. Can you post it in my Discord? It's a 1.5. So, should we do... Okay, so we have two options for the 1.5 use. Should we use these two? Should they be matching or should they be different? I guess is a good question. We also have the option of these. this one. Oh wait, no, is this one worth for? Yeah, we have this one. 
I don't think that one's a report. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm thinking either we keep them both the same or we make mix match. Match them? Okay. I kind of like the lightning bolt one, personally. We'll do it this way. I think that would be more comfortable for the thumb. Yeah. Yellow and green? Yeah, okay, we'll give you the yellow and green. I need to get a new keycap. <gasps> I broke my beloved keycap puller. I'm too powerful. It's okay, we got the backup. I love that one because it's so terrible. It was perfect. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh! <laughs> it's a music keyboard, okay. <laughs> that, yeah, the expression is uh, interesting. <laughs> Okay, is this my new 2023 uh, goal? Is Shrek keycap set? Because <laughs> I will do this. Okay, here we go. Dude, this looks pretty cool. If my friend don't already have Polybius, I'm gonna make a recommendation she get it, cause look at that. Come on. How cute. Also, RIP Keycap Polar, we loved you for many years. You are very efficient. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get cancelled. <laughs> okay, let's pull up monkey types. And we can do a little typey testy. Yeah, okay. You're sending people to raid me? Well, they will be here for the, uh, the typey test. Actually, I do have one other thing I can do after this. So, feel free to send the homies over, Echo. <laughs> we appreciate you. What brown keyboard would you put the Shrek keycaps on? He needs a swamp. Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, there is an ogre keyboard, but it's not accessible to average humans like myself. So, because it was a private buy. The Lutra? Oh, let me look that up keyboard. Are there many brown keyboards? Oh, is that the one that Disastertron is working on? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember seeing a little bit about it. Okay. Yeah, we need to... Okay, here's the thing, Martin Luther Blink. We need to coordinate on the Discord. <laughs> Okay, thank you for posting that in there. <laughs> oh, you drew the otter for it? That's so cute! Oh yeah, Hibiki. Hibiki has a brown color, I believe. I've been really tempted to get one of these just because, like... I think it's a decent deal. And I just like the back part of it. Aw, thank you for raiding! Hello, Legendary 5! What's up? Thanks for the raid. Oh my gosh. Legendary. I think Winnie is here to say hello as well. But welcome. My name is Ellie, aka Keeb New. Um, how was your stream? Let me do a little shout out. <laughs> but yeah, I build um, keyboards uh, usually on Mondays, but I was tired yesterday. Come here, Bean. Don't say hi to our friends. This is my cat, Winnie. 
she's the actual streamer um she loves keyboards and sitting on my stuff but yeah how was your stream tonight i hope you all had fun filled with riles and tribulations oh no i was building my first ever keyboard oh nice what board did you build might wait for the 60% I've been naughty with key purchases. You're getting a dolus. Oh my gosh. I mean, Switch Doctor is like famous, so of course she's gonna have a dolus. But yeah, thank you for the raid. Winnie, how do you feel about this keyboard? Winnie's gotta do her inspection. So far, it's not looking good. <laughs> wait, come back. Oh, how dare you. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I got stuff to do, okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> but yeah, we're just about to do a typing test, so this board is called the Lulu. Um, but yeah, let me know what keyboard you built. Because first keyboards, we love first keyboards. That's so fun and cute. Buying one off a client for cost. Dang, girl, you got those hookups. You got those partner hookups. I got a kit and was just assembling it. Don't know all the details. 75% with Lake Blue Linear Switches. Oh, nice. Building a Tofu 84. Oh, sick! Tofu is like, I feel like a lot of people started with the Tofu. So that's like a solid like first board. But I hope you enjoy building it. And you know, there's lots of opportunities to mod it now. So feel free to ask questions if you, we can help you. I also have a Discord if you need help. There's mostly cat pictures in there and some keyboards. <laughs> but yeah, we're just about to do a typing test for the um, for the Lulu, which is this board. I'm trying to set up. Oh, here we go. The theme. Let's do this one. <clears throat> I will be shocked if I get partner, but we will manifest. Uh Girl, I will not be shocked if you get partner. I've been manifesting this for ye literal years. <laughs> no, we will all be celebrating with you, Switch Dot. It's gonna happen. And we're very excited. Okay, let's open this. I guess I'll do like that. And then I need to turn off my musics and stuff. Okay. So I'm going to turn off the music and adjust my microphone. Celebrate with a subathon. Hey. I feel like, is it a thing? Like, I feel like sometimes partner push, they'll do a subathon, like, during it. Is that a thing? Did I make that up? Okay, let's. I got a new microphone and I'm still learning how to use it. Okay. Let's see if I know how to type on <laughs> on ortho. <laughs> oh wait, it's not plugged in. I'm dumb. Okay, let's plug this in first. That would be helpful. We can also see how the underglow shows up. Ooh. Let's take a look at this real fast. Look at that. Okay. Not rush to apply so my girl, you're gonna hit it. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, let's try this. Wait, where's the space? That's delete. Oh, the space is on the left? No, this is gonna kill me. <laughs> Wait, we need, we need to just fix the key memory first. <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, wait, where is the... Okay, let's do the key map. We need to change this to space because I cannot handle that move. Okay, space, we'll do, oh, that's how they did it. Okay, well, we'll do enter on this one. We don't use right shift. Okay, let's, 
let's try this again. I used, I used like strictly right shift, so it threw me off. <laughs> Why am I still not working? Does that switch have maybe... Oh, you know what? We didn't test the PCB. Because <laughs> they don't have a... Um, they don't have a key map, like a key matrix tester for this firmware. Okay, we're going to have to do maybe... Let's change some things over by us. Uh, keyboard, checker, dang it. Wait, how come I didn't change my... Yeah, it didn't change. How does this thing work? Okay, this is lies. Now I'm annoyed even more. So this particular board was designed to work with a custom firmware called um, PEG and okay in order for it to save the changes to your key map you have to click a save map button which is like kind of annoying. And it'll say, like, saving changes, don't unplug your keyboard. And then when it's done, uh, this is annoying. Okay. Well, let's just check the keys real fast, because I'm guessing, I'm hoping there aren't any bent pins, but I don't know what this key's map to. Yeah, that's right. That's Windows key. I guess this is kind of like fake typey test. <laughs> I think this one is the... Is this the one? Oh, that one's the... Momentary 3. You can see here on the... Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> but when I hold down um, this key, is it this one? You see how it changed layers? So that's one good thing about these OLEDs is it can help you know like what layer you're on. So that one is on two, three. It's kind of cool. Okay, it seems like the switches are all working. But now that our key map is fine, let's try this typey test again. I know, this is disappointing how unprofessional my stream is. <laughs> but this is what you get. <laughs> I need to figure out how to do how Switch Doctor has her monkey type. It looks freaking cool. Okay. Oh. Let's try this again because I feel like I can do better. <laughs> it does sound really cool. Like, because it has that polycarbonate bottom, it sounds really like. It has a really cool sound. And I think, too, the switches are. Uh, these type of switches are kind of loud, which I'm not a man at it. <laughs> yeah, it's a very interesting sound.
Jelly eat your heart. <laughs> hey, we got better. Yeah, it's very, uh, it's really interesting. It sounds really like, I don't know if poppy is the right word. Yeah, it doesn't have any foam inside. Um, it does come with switch foam if you wanted to use that. Yeah, it's very deep. Yeah. It's not like annoying poppy, it's like... It's just very deep. I think part of it is the polycarb bottom. It's ploppy! <laughs> it has a really nice sound though. curious like honestly I'm kind of like so like when I first joined the hobby I was very the split keyboards is what got me into building and now I'm like dang am I going back because I really like this especially with the tinting Yeah, I think the combination of these switches, like the switch itself has like a distinct sound, but I think the switches combined with the polycarb is what's giving it that really like poppy but deep sound. It doesn't sound like high pitch at all. It's really deep. It sounds so unique. I've never, uh, I've never had a board sound like this before. Yeah, this is the bottom. Need a brown 1800 layout. <laughs> Alright. Let me fix my crap. <laughs> my microphone, I'm still learning how to use it. The new one. <laughs> Dang. But yeah, I think Polybius looks great on this. There's definitely enough keycaps to cover split ortho. Um, the tinting on this is super cool. Yeah, it's a cool board. My, my main complaints are the OLED cover, the adhesive on the, like, protective film. They need to sort that because that's, like, a mess. The screws for the tinting kit are too short. And other than that, it, the build is really simple everything seems to fit together well um i think for the price it's like a pretty good deal let me, let me double check because i'm like i don't even remember how much it was in group i, I could be lying <laughs> oh wait uh dang it i'm not used to oh no oh no lulu keyboard I'm not used to ortho. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's double check the pricing. Mm. Order encoder. They still have the pricing up. They have their interest check. I don't know if they posted the pricing anywhere else than their site. Mm. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. It was very inexpensive. Okay, so the case kit was $170. And then the PCB, I'm assuming you could have put your own PCB, like if you had a Lily 58. The PCB, SMD PCB kit was $70. Tenting was $25. Encoders with 16. Uh, they offered also foam wrist rests. 
Wow, that's not bad at all. Maybe that's why I was looking at getting one of these. Well, if they have extras, I'll definitely check it out. But yeah, that's not bad at all. For like the PCB and case together only, that would be like 240. Which for our Alu split case, that's pretty good. But yeah, I think it's worth it for the price, honestly. KBD fan solar. Let's look at it. I think too, if you're this was like your first. Um, like split board. I think this is a solid one because specifically because it includes the number row. So you're not going to get the 40 sphere <laughs> that may set in when you're first trying this type of layout. Oh, the solar. Okay. I remember this. Wait. Okay. Let's pull this up. I remember this because it's kind of a weird... A weird kit. Okay, let's pull up. So this kit is the 40%, but it had like a weird cluster on the side. Yeah, it was really weird. I mean, I think this layout is fine. It was just like this weird cluster on the side but then also the little module you could take out was kind of cool. And the encoders are kind of fun. I think the layout was fine. Yeah, it's like a plank layout. Yeah, the little like modules are kind of cool. It looks funky. <laughs> yeah, it does look kind of funky. It's different. I do remember, I want to say the price was kind of expensive though. From what I remember. For what it is, basically. EP winting to that buff. Yeah. Yeah, it was an interesting board. I, I, if rather than doing the solar, what I would recommend is getting the, um, the gridiron. Because it's the same layout without the weird stuff on the side. It's gonna be a lot less expensive. <laughs> Yeah, we just, we built a gridiron last week. Um, actually, let's do that right now. So, I, this was the gridiron I built last week. I need to send it back, but I wanted to fix this one switch before I send it. Because see how it's like, it's slightly cr crooked? That was bothering me, so I'm going to do that right now <clears throat> before I forget. Look how cute this looks though. On the mat. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Let me clean up a little bit. Um. Or actually I'll just put these on here so. I'll mess up this later. Okay, I'm gonna take these keycaps off. I think I could probably just pull them off with my fingies. These switches are so cute though. These are the ALS switches, which thick stock is kind of sus now, so who knows if they'll ever come back. But them as switches are really nice. Okay, so it comes with a Torx screwdriver. I'm gonna move these to the side so I don't mix them up. <clears throat> but yeah, my my sleep schedule for the last like week has been horrendous. <laughs> but I think I finally normalized it again last night. Cause I got a good night's sleep. And I was like, productivity today, baby. I didn't go on my usual constitutional walk, but I got a lot of things done. That's not been the norm <laughs> last week. <laughs> Ugh. 
Yeah, I don't know why, but sometimes my body wants to be on Australia time. Which, like, it makes for fun times at night with my Australia friends. But then it messes up the rest of my life. I started, um, I got a new skateboard and I started skateboarding <laughs> recently. Bruh, my legs were like ankles. We don't know her. <laughs> Balance. We don't know her either. <laughs> it's fun though. I miss skateboarding. I even got my dad to ride it too a little bit. Let's pop out the bottom. It's kind of... The tolerances are really good on this, so like... I think... I can push maybe through the... There you go. I just pushed through one of the switch holes, like, gently. To help push the case. Because it is, it is very tight tolerances. Okay, now we will, I just need to adjust this one switch because it felt slightly crooked to me. So I'll probably use the keycaps to help with alignment. So I'm going to desolder one of the legs and then position it and then re-solder it again. And we should be good and I can mail this back. Oh, I don't know how to hit the enter key. <laughs> oh yeah, have a good night. We'll catch you later. Okay, let me... Oh, thank you for following VQ Rider. What's up? We're just fixing a switch real fast. So I can send this board back. But how you doing? Oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> uh, there we go. I think I'm gonna do I'm debating if I'm gonna just rotate the switch. I think I can do it while also heating up the pin. That's better. Let me put on some other keycap.
don't feel like slightly rotated. I'm gonna try it a little bit. I tested it to see if it was like the keycap. But I think it's the switch. Straighter to you. Maybe I'm just too picky. I'm <laughs> oh, I feel like that looks crooked. I'm gonna try switching keycaps. to me. Okay, no. I think I was like, I question whether I should keep follower only chat on sometimes, but then people prove me right. <laughs> I'm just like so annoying. Yeah, definitely change your settings back because I don't know what it is about like Twitch, but like I get so many fat phobic comments. Like it's insane. <laughs> like and like people who actively are trying to like avoid the the like filtering and stuff. And it just like really I mean I don't really care because at the end of the day, they're just some idiot with, like, a sad life. But, like, it's still annoying. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. So dumb. I'm just like, you would think that people have like more time on their hands, like to do something else, you know? Like I'm literally just building a keyboard, <laughs> like get a life. Unfortunately, I have to keep adding things to the list of banned terms because people are like so dumb. Alright. 
Oh, I also highly recommend blocking them from putting your full name. <laughs> That's another thing I learned about. Yep, it's bad. But also, I don't feel bad about Oh, just like putting your full name or name as like, like your IRL name as block terms just for doxing prevention. Yeah, I was trying to like think of other things people might try to exploit. I don't know what it is about the switch. I wonder if I have to hold it in place. Yeah, right? Like... And I wish it could just be, you know, like... It's the other thing too, right, about like encouraging other people to stream and especially like more people of like minority groups is like on the one hand you would love for more diversity but on the other hand you're not going to try and like put someone in a compromising position where they're going to be targeted, right, like. So I don't blame people for not streaming. Okay, I think that's better, but it is what it is. We are done. Oh, yeah. And then I can put these over here. We're gonna have to use our not cute tiny key cat polar anymore because she died. Rest in peace. <laughs> oh, it's the throwing bag. Hey, what's up, Aaron? You're catching us at the very end of the stream. <laughs> Ugh. You just missed someone trying to bully me. That was fun. <laughs> okay, now let's put... I don't think he wants the tools back, I think just the case. So, I was thinking, okay, I have like 10 more of these switches left, I think. Do you think I should just send them with the board? Because like, I don't know what I want to do with 10 switches. And then maybe if like a switch is wrong, then he can just have extras. Or what do you think? I'm also going to remove the cat ears. Because I know there's lots of cares. And extras at the board. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, because I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these switches.
happening. Yeah, it came out great. I think Polybius looks great. There's enough keys for compatibility, which is nice. Um, Polybius just came out great, just generally as the keycap set. <clears throat> oh you have it on two boards did you get two or you said you used the alphas of another set right for one of the boards it's kind of yeah it's like black but like kind of a, on the bluer side of black it's definitely black though I haven't seen it in daylight, so I have to check like in a different light. But yeah, it's definitely like a cooler black color. I have the Aurora Polaris alphas on my TK and the Polybius er, alphas on my Plexus. Nice. I still need to build my Plexus. I have the PCB in plate for the Baca. Considering keycap options for your green dullest dang girl. She got the she got the streamer color. <laughs> it's kinda like a what what would you describe that green as? Like a olive green? Oh, oh, that's right. I was trying to think. There was someone who was mentioning, like, I think it was Patty was saying she was going to get that one, but she wanted the green one because she's, like, obsessed with green boards or something like that. It's really dark. Okay. Yeah, you'll have to let us know. Which dot got all the freaking cool stuff. All right, goodbye to the gridiron. You are so freaking cute, board. I'm gonna wipe it down from keep. I wanna say she wanted green cause she's like obsessed with green keyboards. Okay. wrap this back up which side of the bubble wrap do you put on which side I'm just curious <laughs> bubbles in okay I don't think there was anything else I needed to send with this. It was just the just the board itself. Hey, what's up, Shikimazu? Hello. How's it going? <laughs> We're just finishing up. Uh, I just was adjusting one of the switches from the gridiron that I built last week. Oh wait, I did this backwards. This is the outer one. But yeah, how are you doing? Uh, we built the Lulu tonight and put Polybius on it. She cute. I'm happy with Polybius. I think it came out great. Yeah, things are going good. We had a little harassment incident earlier, but other than that, things are fine. Alright. I did make write a little card for Jake, because I do really appreciate P3D for sending me something to build. And I'm sending him some stickers. 
Um, oh, also, I sent out some stickers to the people who had requested them because I had ran out from the first batch. Uh, but I I did get more in, so if you don't have one and you want one, just let me know. I'll send one out. But yeah, I sent out a batch of them today. My brother asked for some because his coworker wanted one apparently. It's pretty funny. Why? I don't know why this is bothering me. But it's like not keeping its uh, tension. And I'm having a problem with that. <laughs> But yeah, um, I have a bunch of keyboards stuff to build. I'm making up a list of like all this stuff because Gnarly Charlie sent me a bunch of stuff and then, um, I have a couple boards for myself. Yeah, so this is the Lulu. It's a, um, it's a split. Uh, is a split ortholinear board with columnar stagger. Uh, it's designed by Board Source. Okay. But my friend, my friend is the one who bought it, and um, she sent it to me to help her because she doesn't uh, solder. So I did the um, the rotary encoders for her. The nice thing about it is that. If you don't solder and you don't want rotary encoders, everything else is hot swap. So um, you can build this yourself. And, or It's basically like assembling it yourself very easily. Um, but yeah, it was a fun build. I really like it. Okay, so here's the yeah, paper. Oh, where did I put the little made a little card weird one to wrap this up but yeah i'm setting the gridiron back which i'm really sad because it's really cute <laughs> and then i'll be shipping out the lulu back to my friend soon um i just gotta package it all up but yeah i hope you're having a good night this board actually came out really cool if you have time to watch the vod later um we did a little typing test so you can check that out. Um, but yeah, let me find somebody to raid. <sighs> I'm still kind of annoyed from earlier, but okay. <laughs> Let's see, GRN streaming. Tofu? Ooh, you got a raid suggestion? Who is it? Tom thinks. Oh, is that the one that uh I think important research likes to raid him. Okay. I was just trying to see too if there was any baby streamers streaming. Uh, oh yeah, tofu types. I don't know if I've raided tofu types before. Also, I want someone without punctuation in their username because I don't know how to do it on this board right now. <laughs> okay, well, let's read um, CG Buen. Oh, just kidding. Static. Redeem his points. He's yep. stiff arming us all into. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Hey, okay. Thank you, Static. <laughs> Static wants his raid. <laughs> Alright, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with me. This is a good stream. Um, I will be back next week doing some more keyboard stuff. I need to plan out, like, what builds are coming up because I have like a bunch of crap I need to do. Um, but yeah, I hope you all had a good night. Thank you to all the homies who were watching. Shout out to the haters making fatphobic comments. 
Shout out to y'all. <laughs> yeah, I'll catch you all. Oh, do we want to do a raid message? Let's do show us your keyboard. I don't know if he has any like spam things though that might like mess us up. Well, just throw up some hearts or something. <laughs> but yeah, I will catch you all later. I hope you have a good night. And bye bye. <laughs>